Hey, if you're having trouble getting your smoker hot enough and uh, keeping it at temperature, this video's for you. Hey, I'm Frank Cox. You might have heard of me from smokerbuilder.com or Legend Smokers, which is this offset right behind me. Um, anyway, I get this question a lot, and I just wanted to do a video about it real quick so that I can make it available for people that have this issue. So uh, what I wanted to do is just touch on like three common reasons that I've found are true over the years when it comes to that situation. Um, you know, the most popular one uh, that I think is, is a condition that most people face on smaller offsets, especially like uh, the Brinkman's or a char griller or uh, anything you might get at like a box store, Home Depot, whatever, uh, Oklahoma Joe, those kind of pits. They're real thin metal and stuff like that. And you'll have an issue called a cross draft or a back draft. And really, just to make that simple to understand, Whenever the wind is blowing, let's say you got high wind, high wind uh, speeds, right? And that wind is blowing directly across, like this way, across the firebox door or wherever your air inlet is, or uh, any way, or it's blowing this way, like the on this pit behind me, it's blowing completely the wrong direction. What will happen is, is you'll actually have this negative pressure at the outlet or the inlet of your firebox, which is sucking air out of that firebox, literally like as if you were blowing across the opening of a like a soda bottle. If you ever did an empty soda bottle and blew across the lid and it made that uh, woo sound, that's kind of what's happening there. We're pulling a vacuum on that on that bottle and we're all that air is going in the, you know, just sucking air on it out of it. So since this thing has air coming out the smokestack, it can go in the smokestack if it's drafting the wrong way. So what'll happen in that case is you won't be transferring any of your heat and smoke or air volume into the cook chamber while that while that condition exists. As a matter of fact, the, you could throw as much fuel as you want into that cooker and it will not change the condition that you're facing. Some handy that I always keep with me here, and this is more like for deer hunting and stuff, but it's this little wind, it's basically scentless talcum powder. You can use regular, but I've always got a bottle with this with me. And uh, basically you just open that little snoot right there and you can, even when there's almost no wind, you can see how it's drafting. Right now that's going the wrong direction for this situation that my pit's set up in right now. Um, so the way to fix that is to rotate the smoker. So what I always recommend doing is have the wind either quartering, like you want it to go diagonally towards the firebox, not right directly in it or right directly across it. Um, anyway, that, that'll help alleviate that situation. Now, when it gets into high winds, you can try to set up like some blocks or something, or if you've got an easy up with a wall on it, you know, set up an easy up, get some walls put up on there. Um, but high winds are really hard to battle uh, when you're cooking on a smoker until that cooker gets up to temp and is, is hot and draws full, you know, has a full draw on it. Now, bingo over there, that's that propane tank smoker over there. That thing doesn't care where the wind's blowing from. It does not matter. Um, that, that pit is big enough and it's a thick enough material. It's like 5 16 thick, most of it is. Um, it's just a huge cooker. By the time you get that cooker up to temp, it's, it's going to have so much flow going through it. It's, it's just going to ignore those high wind conditions or cross draft wind. Matter of fact, I've ran it in this exact situation, like with this one behind me, where the wind is going. Well, now it's shifted. That's another issue you'll have. But when the wind is going the wrong direction across the pit, um, you know, it doesn't even care. So another issue you might have that's causing uh, your pit not to come up to temp is some kind of a design issue. So whenever you're designing a smoker, or if a smoker's designed properly, you're going to need a big enough firebox, not just so that you can fit wood in there, you're going to need a big enough firebox so that you can fit enough air in there. So because you're heating the air with the fire, right? Some of that air goes into the fire and causes combustion to happen and get clean combustion, right? But then the rest of that air is in there simply as a medium to transfer the heat from the firebox into the cook chamber and then out the stack. So you're going to have to have a big enough firebox to hold that volume of air so that we can heat enough air. It's no different if, if we were pumping hot water through a, a plumbing system or a heating system. We have to have enough 
uh, of the medium, whatever that is, that's transferring the flow to transfer that heat uh, mass into heated mass into that cook chamber or wherever it's going. Um, in this case here, this firebox is plenty big enough for a 24 by 48 cook chamber. And then that smokestack is another really critical part of that uh, design. <clears throat> we need to make sure that the smokestack has enough rise, first of all, and then also has enough volume and it's matched to the firebox because we wanna be able to, there's this thing in nature called the chimney effect. Once we have a hot heated air mass, it's gonna try to go up. It's moving fast, all the molecules are. It wants to go up and get, it's lighter because it's expanded uh, against the colder, denser air that sits down low. So it wants to go up and get as high up as it can, right? So once we get that smokestack heated up, or the chimney in this case, then it'll start to draw, and then the smoke and the heat will leave the cook chamber and in, in turn will suck new air into the firebox and continue that direction of flow for us. Um, one more thing that you might run into here could be the size of the throat opening. Now the throat is that opening from the firebox to the cook chamber. And what that does is, is if that opening is not big enough, here's the common situation that people do. When they build their own pit, they have a firebox then they'll take like a piece of six inch pipe or something and they'll go from the firebox, have this length of pipe and then go into the cook chamber. I've seen that a number of times. And that pipe simply isn't big enough for that body of air to fit through it to get into the cook chamber. So therefore you're choking off the flow. If that throat is the right size, you won't choke flow off at the firebox opening into the cook chamber. So that's another huge design mistake I see people make. Okay, so one more thing you might run into is your fuel situation. Now, I've seen some people where they have like a log rack up in their firebox, let's say, and let's and they maybe they used half inch round bar and they made their opening uh, of the, the bottom of that grate is too big so it doesn't hold a good coal bed and it renders too much coal down into the bottom of the firebox. So therefore they have a hard time keeping flames or keeping their wood on fire. That's a huge issue right there. Um, charcoal baskets are susceptible to that if they have too big of holes. So I never make a hole in a fire, ba uh, fire basket or a log rack that's bigger than a three quarter by half inch hole. So that would be like three quarter number nine expanded metal, for instance. That's as big of an opening as I want. I want it to be that, that or smaller. Now, another uh, really good way to do to fix this is just burn your fire right on the bottom of the firebox. Now, in years past, that was a no-no. We always talked about getting the log rack up. Matter of fact, I've got podcasts that say to get that log rack up and get as much air under that fire as possible. So it's not really that big of a de deal to burn your fire on the bottom. It's gonna consume a lot more wood. You're gonna have to actually spread out that coal bed so that you can get the ash to not choke out the coal bed. There's some more management that has to go into that, but uh, that's another really good tactic. If you, if you think you're struggling and you don't have any way to fix it on the fly, just burn your fire right on the bottom of the firebox and then you can use your door as the air inlet on that. Um, but it is best if you wanna get on a cheaper offset you want to get that log rack up off the bottom get and uh, uh, block off some of the holes if they're too big or use another piece of three-quarter expanded you can get at the hardware store so that it holds the coals on it. <clears throat> and then uh, make sure you got a big enough coal bed. Once you lose that coal bed, your fire's going out. You're not going to be able to keep the logs lit. Logs won't burn by themselves. They need to have that coal bed under them and plenty of air. So another situation you might have is like if you've got wood that was, uh, let's say even if it was standing dead wood, but or if you fell a tree or whatever and you let it sit for a year, that's not good enough. It's still too wet right so we want to get that moisture content down in the splits of wood that's one reason why we split the wood is so that it can sit and dry out so ideally you would have that moisture content somewhere around eight or nine percent something like that it can be a little bit drier but if it's wetter than that you're gonna to have to preheat that log and get it hot before you introduce it into the fire so that's one thing that we do is we'll set that log that split right up on top of the firebox you'll always see me with a log on top of the firebox some guys will actually put it right inside the cook chamber like right here on this uh, throat end and and uh, let it heat up in the cook chamber first before they throw it on 
So anyway, those are a few tips. I hope you found that helpful. Um, anyway, if, if you have, uh, you know, a smoker that you're not really happy with and things like that, and you're looking for options out there, uh, go check out one of two places, legendsmokers.com. If you just want to buy one that I built that way it, uh, you know, it works when you get it and it lasts forever, or you can go to smokerplans.net and buy a set of plans and, and, uh, build your own. I've already done all the design and the math and all of that stuff for you. It's just as simple as just cutting some metal and putting it together. So anyway, once again, I'm Frank Cox. Appreciate you watching this video. And, uh, if you found it useful, let me know. Thanks.